All right, so the last thing we talked, we talked about the Peloponnesian Wars. Um, the Peloponnesian Wars uh, just made Greece this, just everybody's fighting, everybody's weakening Greece, everything is just not good. And it just kind of sets up for Greece to be taken over. If there was someone that would want to come in and go ahead and try to pick that cherry, um, of good property, <laughs> which would have been really easy to beat because Greece was just so dedicated to what was going on inside of it that they just aren't paying attention. And that person is, or that, that group are the Macedonians. Macedonians, if you look at your map, Macedonians is right on top of Greece. They're right at the top. Um, and they just see what's going on and think, yeah, why not? Let's do it. So that's what they did. Oh, and by the way, your learning target is that you can identify and describe the important people of ancient Greece. So we are going to be talking about a couple of the important people um, in ancient Greece. We've already talked about Pericles, uh, but this guy, Alexander the Great, becomes really important to ancient Greece. Even though he's not really Greece, he's Macedonian, he's really important to the whole um, civilization of Greece. All right. Philip II, and yes, he has one eye because he was attacked and lost his eye in a battle. Um, but Philip II is the, oops, oh, I have my face right there. I'll try it again. There we go. Uh, Philip II is from Macedonia. Um, before he could conquer the Persian Empire, he was murdered by a young Macedonian noble. Um, nobody knows why, because the noble was killed immediately. But he uh, went in and he kind of is the first guy that came in and took over um, the empire of, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the, the territory, the civilization of Greece. Philip II went in there and kind of conquered everything. Um, he wanted to go in and conquer the Persian empire. I'm not really sure why this is, seems like it's out of order to me, but maybe not. Uh, but anyway, he went in there, sorry, let me try this again. He went in there and took over all of Greece. Um, but he wanted to go in and, and, and take over Persia, but before he was able, he was murdered. So his 21, her 20, not 21, his 21, I can't speak, his 20 year old son, Alexander took over. Um, Alexander decided to go ahead and fulfill his father's wishes about Persia. So he goes in and invades Asia Minor in 334 BC. Um, he destroyed the local Persian army and he freed the city states in Asia um, that were ruled by the Greeks. This is a mosaic that is left that was found recovered of Alexander the Great. By the winter of 3rd, 332 BC, Alexander had captured Egypt and Syria. So he's building a huge empire at this point. Um, Greece, all of Egypt, Syria, uh, Persian Empire. <laughs> He's just amassing all that land. He built the city of Alexandria in Egypt, which became famous for trade, science, and education. So you're, you, this is a common theme um, with Alexander the Great is once he's conquering people in these areas, he sets up lots of capitals and cities that are named after him and Alexandria, no exception. Alexandria is named after Alexander. Um, but there's a lot of them. In 331 BC, Alexander went east and defeated the Persians at Guagamela near Babylon. Then his army took over the rest of the Persian empire. So he accomplished for his dad what his dad did not get a chance to do. There is another little picture of Alexander. Um, in 326 BC, Alexander and his army crossed the Indus River and fought many battles in India. So they're looking to add India to his list of important territories. And 326 BC, Alexander and his army crossed the Indus River and fought. I said it again. I did it again. Put it in there twice. Many battles in India. Whatever. Um, he arrived back in Babylon in 323 BC. He wanted to invade southern Arabia, but he died 10 days later at age 32. So why we learn about him? He conquered a whole bunch of people. Okay, great. Why? Okay. So he left behind a huge legacy. And one of his most important legacies is that he started this Hellenistic age. Um, so he was known as a great and brave military leader. He always tried to copy his hero, Achilles. Um, 
so Achilles is a hero in one of the, in the Iliad, um, which is a book of mythology that was written by Homer. Achilles is a hero that was said to be so strong that he was pretty much invincible. Um, and the reason why is because his mother took him as an infant and dipped him in the river Styx, which is the river you have to cross to get to the underworld in Hades. So she took this baby and dipped him in, in the Styx and everything that, that was touched by the water was invincible. They, um, in fact, he was only not touched in one place, which was his heel. So eventually um, he, uh, you know, it goes to battle and he's this big, strong guy and doesn't get beaten until one day he is hit in the heel with an arrow, I believe. And he dies, just dies because he's hit in his one weak spot. So um, that is a figure of speech that is still used today when people say, um, like somebody has a weakness, they'll say that's their Achilles heel, um, which comes directly from that story. But Achilles, because he was so strong, he was Alexander's hero. Um, when he died, Alexander was the most powerful ruler in the world. He controlled almost all of the territory that we've talked about so far this year. The only place that he didn't control when he died was China. So because he was ruled so much territory because he was so powerful. They call him Alexander the Great. Uh, remember that a legacy is what a person leaves behind when they die. And his legacy was what the world knew about Greek culture and language. Um, this is one of the reasons why we are where we are today. What we do today is because of Alexander the Great. He started what's called the Hellenistic era. Hellenistic just means Greek. Um, so it means like the Greek, he brought the great, uh, Alexander the Great began the Hellenistic area, which means like the Greeks. It, um, it's just a time when all the ideas of Greece, architecture, writing, um, trade ideas, art, uh, plays, it comes from Greece and it spreads everywhere. It spreads to people who were not Greek and they took those ideas and used them. Alexander wanted the Macedonians, the Greeks, and the Persians to basically become one main people. So to do that, um, he used Persians as local officials, and he encouraged uh, his soldiers to marry Asian women. So marrying all these people, having babies together, was intermixing the um, the groups of people into one I don't know what he wanted to call it, but one group of people that were all like all three cultures mixed together. Um, move that over. There were four Hellenistic empires. Uh, basically, after he died, they took his land and they split it up into four Hellenistic kingdom, and that is Macedonia, Pergamum, Egypt, and the Seleucid kingdoms. Um, Greek was the official language of these kingdoms, so they all spoke Greek. Um, and the kings gave the jobs and those lands to Greeks or Macedonians. Um, you've seen this twice now. This is the famous lighthouse that is in Alexandria. Um, it's in the song that you listen to all the time when I play it, the Mr. Nicky song. So, yeah, uh, that is the giant lighthouse that they built. It's called the Pharos. By 100 BC, Alexandria was the largest city in the Mediterranean world. Huge. Huger than any other place in Egypt. The Hellenistic kings built many other uh, cities and needed many workers like architects, engineers, philosophers, arts, artisans. It caused this explosion of jobs, explosion of culture all over the place. Um, the kings asked Greeks and Macedonians to move to these cities, which again, um, it increased uh, that flow of Greek ideas and knowledge everywhere. These colonies helped spread the Greek culture as far east as modern Afghanistan and India. So Greek culture was everywhere back in the day. All right. So you're going to watch this video about Alexander the Great. Um, and you're going to take some notes on Alexander the Great. And you're going to put together a timeline um, using the dates and the information that we talked about today. You're going to put the events in the timeline in the correct order. And then you're going to do a Time Magazine activity, and there's going to be a video on that slide to help you with how to do it. And that's it. Have a great rest of your day, and make good choices.